when you look at this little action figure sitting in front of me, what do you see? Do you see a dorky little fish holding a very deadly looking harpoon? Do you see one of the first Toys to Life video games? Do you see one of the best Toys to Life video games? A lot of you could be feeling a lot of nostalgia, and a lot of you could have no idea what this thing is. Either way, all of us probably have our own opinions on this thing. But, when I look at this little action figure, what I see is a childhood. Skylanders is an Activision-produced kids' action game that spent 90% of the budget on music and cutscenes, so the gameplay looks like this. Yeah, I'll be honest, the trailers promised a lot better. The game had a simple concept. These heroes from a different planet got launched to our planet, we put them on a portal so we can fight some bad guys and save the day. Boom, easy. The more games they introduced, the more new concepts they kept introducing. In the second game, there were, uh... Well, well, there were big Skylanders now. In the third game, you could swap some of them. In the fourth, there was the trap crystals. In the fifth, there were cars. And in the sixth, you could actually make your own Skylanders. After doing a little bit of research, this game proved to be very nostalgic for many. A bunch of people like me grew up playing this game day in, day out. Most of you have probably played or at least heard of this game, but a lot of you are probably questioning, what was so good about it to have me make this video? Well, a lot of things, but I'll go more in depth later. Now I think it's time I tell you about the game that defined my childhood. A game that, while it doesn't hold up as well as all these other classics, still deserves some love. Here we go, this was the original, the OG. This game started it all. It started the Skylander series, and it really showed the world that a Toy to Life game could actually be pretty fun. You know, whenever I saw comments debating which games were the best, this game often topped the list along with its sequel to Skylander's Giants. Speaking of the original two games, these games often carried the most nostalgia, because they weren't corrupted by the EA paradox, cough. Cough. The original had a unique marketing strategy, unique story, unique characters, and unique gameplay. It was an idea not many had seen, and being a kid's game, a lot of people like me have a lot of good memories about it. And in doing this research, there's something I noticed that I never really cared about as a kid. I've already talked about how the first few games don't really have great graphics, but I mean, look at these level designs. I mean, I knew Activision cared at first, but like, dang, that's actually pretty cool. But the other thing I noticed that really surprised me is... What? Well, just listen to this music. <laughs> And this is only from the first game! If anything, music was probably the only element that was consistently good in every single one of these. I will also say this game was smarter than every single one of its predecessors. <laughs> and by that I mean it foreshadows, in the beginning, the final boss of the game, and a bunch of elements from the next game. It also has a lot less annoying side quests than the others, and actually follows a consistent storyline. So yeah, this is the game that started the massive and short-lived trend of Toys to Life games. But let's see how they continued their story.
This is the second game in this hex out of games. Yeah, apparently that's what a series of six is called, and you will not get me to say the other version. <laughs> this game was, in a lot of ways, an improved version of the first. Let me lay out the formula of a perfect sequel set up by ya boy Schaeferillus. It expands the universe in new and creative ways, adding the giants and other new characters and villains, and it also shows us a lot of new locations. It continues the story, going as far as showing us how the main villain got back from Earth, and explaining how the giants arrived. And like I said earlier, the entire plot about the Archean Vault was already hinted at with the existence of Archeans in the first game. I'm telling you guys, they actually gave a crap back then. <laughs> 3. It introduced new themes and gameplay mechanics. And 4. Considering many characters stuck around through the following games and there were multiple references in later games about this one, I would say this game definitely left an impact. And let me just say, the awesome level designs and music are still in this game. But here is something interesting, and if you want to learn more about this topic, I'm going to talk about I recommend watching the video titled The Fate of Toys to Life. It covers a few other games that no one cares about, but it's still a pretty interesting video. Anyway, a big reason people like this and the first game over most other than nostalgia is cost. You could finish all of the Giants game with only using the startup pack and characters from the first game. You could experience the new game with the old characters at an affordable price. Every challenge and extra content could be accessed by mostly any character. I mean, the whole point of the game was the new characters, but either way, it was still not as money grubbing of a game as the following games. But alas, as good as I still think all these games were, the next game, Swap Force, is where the problems started. Okay, now, don't get me wrong, I still think this game is good. It's just a few gameplay and financial decisions that make it less fun. This is your captain speaking. We're, uh, here. Those swapping mechanics are really fun, allowing for a lot of new gameplay, but this is also where the problems arrive. You need many different swappers to complete levels and get extra content. You complete challenges by using the Swap Force's unique abilities, the climbing, flying, digging, etc. But they take way too long. A lot of the previous games had short and simple levels, with boss fights here and there, but at least those were entertaining and not just boring challenges. I will say, I do like many of the new characters. I am surprised that Tessa didn't make me want to die and was actually an enjoyable character to see interacting with Flynn. And while we're talking about Flynn, can I just say, sure, sometimes his jokes are just dragged out and or childish, but every once in a while I can't help but just smile at his lines. I mean, come on. According to the map, Iron Jaw Gulch is somewhere to the west. East. Either way, we're heading in the wrong direction. Probably. You know what? It'll be fine. I am the village crier. Yeah, well, I get emotional too sometimes. <laughs> Shut up. You ignore your instincts. I happen to like machines, and ignoring my instincts is the only reason I'm even getting on this bird. Chaos's mom was a fun little addition, and I do really like the way they used the portal for her final fight. Actually, most of the villains were pretty cool, but, uh, Chaos was interesting in this one. The graphics also had a lot of nice improvements along with Yes, again, the level design. But I really don't want to talk about the level designs because of the boring designs in the annoyingly long Swap Force quests. But I will talk about the music again. I mean, come on. It's awesome. Before doing this, I didn't realize how much nostalgia Swamp Force was filled with. I honestly thought I forgot most of it. 
I mean, going into this, I had a wildly different ranking than when I ended this research. And while this game ended up being pretty low on my list, I can still acknowledge the creativeness in a lot of this game. And I can still say it was leagues better than the worst game on this list, but not quite as good as the next game. Trap Team. This was Activision's attempt to get the same great reaction they got from Skylanders Giants and Skylanders Spires Adventure after the semi-failure, but not really, that Swap Force presented. Swap Force had long and boring levels, but this game actually had a lot of nice, short and sweet levels, along with the new traps. These things brought a whole new element of gameplay, and whether or not we can agree this game is good, I think we can all agree that this was an awesome and fun new mechanic. I will say the level designs in this game are much more boring at times than the last two, with some exceptions. But the, uh, the music... The music... Yeah, it's still great. But one thing I really dislike in this and the future two games is that they do not have the duels. In the first three games, you could do multiplayer duels, but not in these last three. Insert good transition here. Long st Wait, what? Why did I put that in the script? It, it literally says, say insert good- What the hell was I- Long story short, this game was a bit better than Swap Force, but it still had some of the problems that Swap Force had, and more. In past games, the elemental gates could be locked by any character of that element, but now it's only the Trap Masters. And if you wanted to trap any other crystal than the element that was in the starter pack, you needed multiple other traps. Okay, this game has its problems just like every other game, and it's lucky enough to find itself better than at least two of these games. Hey, it's me. I'm the one they call Editor Will. I just wanted to point this out for no reason. In the video I said, it's lucky enough to find it above two games. I just wanted to point out, in editing, I noticed, like, it w the levels were a lot more boring, the level designs were a lot more boring, and the music was the weakest in this game out of all of the games. There were a bunch of weird mini-games and all these annoying puzzles that I actually decided Swap Force was better. Here's the little tier list thing I got going on. Oh, what are the two mystery ones? What are those? Uh, I don't know. And it's lucky enough to find itself better than at least two of these games. But not the next. Skylander Superchargers was the most hittest or missest of the games. Yeah, I, I, I English. But if there's one thing to notice, it's that back when Imaginators was actually still considered good in my mind, this game was my favorite. And nowadays, it's my little brother Henry's favorite. This game is probably most appealing to kids out of all of them, with all the unique designs and multiple different types of racing and just vehicles in general. But why do I still like this game? I mean, clearly it appeals to kids, so why do I still like it? After all, talking about that tier list thing I came up with earlier, Superchargers is third, so why do I still like it? Well, I don't really look at the financial side very often. I'm still trying to live my free childhood as slowly as possible. And I do like the gameplay, but the classics are still a little better in my opinion because of nostalgia and the lack of company greediness. But nowadays, I look for a good story. And this game delivers hard in that category. It's incredibly unique for a kid's game, especially Skylanders. The villain, Chaos, he wins. The game starts off with showing us how he's destroying our world and has separated us from being able to save it. 
And he also wins more than once, by the way. He destroys what we initially thought was our only weapon against the darkness. He destroys a good one-tenth of all of Skylands, and technically kills multiple beings across their world, too. Sure, he gets stopped in the end, but it's still a crazy idea to put all of this in a children's action game. And before I get even more deep in all this story stuff I want to talk about, I want to get into the stuff other people actually care about. So, first off, the music... still good. <laughs> better than the last two, I'll give it that. The graphics are better than ever, gameplay is really smooth, but the piloting can be tricky for some. The game is very short compared to all the other ones, with not really a lot of gameplay outside of the driving, but it makes up for it in story and music, and the fact that most of the driving is pretty fun. Okay, now back to the story. Like I said, the villain won at the start. But get this, the darkness is a character. All of evilness ever to exist is embodied into one creature, and we kill it. Now that fight is very underwhelming for the impact it has on their world, but it is the final fight nonetheless. But the fact that Chaos wins, the heroes lose the one thing they thought they needed to defeat the darkness, and they still end up defeating all of the existing evilness, technically. This should be the finale. We don't need another game. Sure, the next one provided a lot of fun stuff, but from a story standpoint, which at least they used to care about, this should be the finale. And your history! But I mean, no one else cares about the story. So what made this series fail? Why was the next so unsuccessful? Why did the ending come out of nowhere? It can't be the story. Most of the fans cared almost as little as the company did about that. There were so many new and fun elements being introduced with what looked like a thriving fanbase. So what went wrong? Well... This game, this stupid game, gets on my nerve. Now, don't get me wrong, it has enough fun stuff to keep it above the mobile Skylander games, but it still fails from a sequel, gameplay, story, and financial standpoint. Now, it does expand the universe in new ways, but much like Shrek the Third, yes, that garbage fire, it expands the universe and themes in completely idiotic ways. It introduces the creation crystals, which are actually an awesome idea, which should have been attached to a way better game. But they are introduced out of nowhere, at least give some context. But, fine. Here are some nice things before I absolutely murder this game. The crystals are pretty naturally connected to the villain side of things, and I think it's a pretty cool idea to have some of the older Skylanders retire and actually seen on the screen interacting with each other. Like I said, the creation crystals are a really cool idea. The final boss's look is pretty sick, although the fight itself is pretty garbage. Level designs are pretty cool, and I hate to say it, but the worst game on this list has one of the best music pieces of the whole series. Although, the overall music in the entire game is nowhere near as good as the first three and Superchargers, because Lorne, that name, composed those, but they didn't use him in this one. What the hell, Activision? Okay, now that I have been nice to this game, allow me to... kill it. <clears throat> it's expensive, and you need multiple senseis to finish the game, and you could technically get through it without using the Imaginator characters, but most of the earnings in the game are for the Imaginator specifically, so it would all be useless. Also, after you pick a class for an Imaginator, you cannot fix it without exploiting a bug. Also, the fact that every single level had a boss fight against Chaos's Doomlanders was so tedious. They were boring and often out of nowhere. 
I personally disliked the fact that this villain had gotten back to their world from Earth, survived multiple crashes, and at one point took over the entire world. And these idiots think this jar will help. Also, can we talk about the new cast design? It's hideous. Look at the old designs. Classic and consistent. So what is this? The talking brain is pretty dumb, along with the whole ancient spiel. We don't need it. The final boss fight is somehow even more underwhelming than the last darkness fight. It's way too easy with enough high level characters. Way too many things are reserved for specific characters. And finally, this game shouldn't even exist. I have hinted at it this entire video, but this game comes after what, with a few tweaks, would have been the perfect ending for this game series. But no, no, this company just had to milk the series dry until everyone got tired of it. Sure, some people missed the game, but at least now I can appreciate the storytelling in the first five games. <sighs> I think this comment perfectly sums up my thoughts on the game. It's fine. It has good things and bad things, but it doesn't fit with the rest of the series. Sure, I dislike it now, but this game is for people quite younger than me, and I'm glad I can still enjoy its highs, even though its lows are a lot more present. Skylanders is a classic. It had some unironic amazing moments, and some incredibly annoyingly bad moments. I don't want to hate on this game, it was my childhood, but I can't help it because it was my childhood. It all went to crap and I miss when it was just a thriving fan base getting awesome content from a company that was making it for the fans and not for the money. Sure, now I wish Skylanders 6 didn't exist, but I have to remember child me, who would have loved game after game after game. There were so many unexplored game mechanics that they could have used, but when the game didn't make enough money, it was gone, with one final underwhelming mobile game to finish it off. I miss the days when I was excited for a new trailer to drop. I miss the days when my parents would spend way too much money on toys that I would paint and break. There was a reason there were so many channels made specifically for Skylanders on YouTube. And there is a reason that most of these channels were career starting. There was a reason there was more than five of these games. There is a reason that every comment I saw on this game was talking about how they loved it as a kid. This game had a story to tell in multiple unique ways and was unfortunately killed by the company's greediness. This is why I'm a fan of games like Subnautica and Ori and the Blind Forest. They continue the story over sequels, and the only major changes aren't to milk the series dry, it's to make the game more fun, and overall, just better. Sure, I'll miss the series, and I'm sad it never got an official ending. But hey, we got it while it was here, and I did learn something today. I learned that in the future, you will probably find me proudly jamming out to Skylanders music while studying ROLL OUTRO! <laughs>